Well, I'm a little worried about misinformation today and, you know, what the what Big Brother is going to say about what we're talking about today. Uh, just want to make sure we're we're in line uh, and our all of our words are politically correct. And if not, I think it's appropriate to not only ban uh, us from, let's say, Twitter, but also from all other social media and maybe all speech entirely. Well, I don't think you should be allowed to speak if you have misinformation, you know. Uh, you know, it's not enough. YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, but radio, television, uh, all internet. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Hey, look, if you want to write letters, you can write letters to people. Can't send them in the mail. No, no, not with a federal. You, it would be a federal crime to send, uh, false information through the U S postal service. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do that. Sure. Sure, but you could write letters. I didn't say send them. I said you could write letters. Um, this is uh, Amy Klobuchar. Now, remember, Amy Klobuchar was the one that said, hey, you know what we're going to do? Um, we're going to, these people are way too crazy for me. Uh, and if you're a Democrat and you just want common sense and you don't want all this radicalism, well, let me tell you right now, what you need is Amy Klobuchar for president. Yeah. She was the moderate. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, she came out and, uh, and, and introduced her uh, Health Misinformation Act, co-sponsored by Senate Commerce Communications Subcommittee, blah, 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 create an exception to websites currently uh, current liability protection for user-posted content. So in other words, if Facebook is providing misinformation, well, they're not, they're not held responsible. They, they don't mean to. OK, mm-hmm. um, but uh, whew, let me tell you something. If you post something now, this is only because it's a health emergency. Right, Stu? I mean, mm-hmm. it's this is not going to happen for, you know, everyday things. No, no, of course. Not. Just just the health. Just if there's like a major health and safety sort of situation. Right. Like like covid mm-hmm. or. Right. Um, right. Exactly. Like a pandemic, uh, an ongoing pandemic right. or or racism, because racism wow. is a really big health problem. As we found out, that's why you could protest. Yeah, that's why the, it was mo- it yeah. was OK to protest in the George Floyd thing, yeah. because obviously yeah. more important than the pandemic as a health issue was racism. Racism. So, it was a bigger it was a yeah. bigger pandemic mm-hmm. in America. Mm mm-hmm. uh, than uh, the actual pandemic. And, you know, I mean, I, I think we should throw in guns because guns are um, oh, a yeah. huge problem. Huge problem mm-hmm. with health. Huge health issue. That's probably um, okay. Yeah. The, we, I will say this. The climate is so serious, Glenn. It's well, such it's the health of everybody. Yeah. We all die. Yeah. It's a, so. it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I mean, ex- existential threat. Right. And talk radio, really, I oh, mean, yeah. it's become the guys on talk radio are really more of cult leaders. Mm, that's, a else. that's a great and, point. That's a great point. Health issue. And they really uh, need to be stopped. This is, we're not making this up. This is exactly what will happen. And I know this audience knows this, but so many people in America won't even pay attention to this story. You know, we are being killed not by Marxist. We are being killed by apathy. We are being killed by a bunch of people who have no interest in doing anything for themselves. They'll believe whatever they hear, um, and they'll just take it at face value, and they don't really care. They're not really paying attention to any of the news. They probably can't tell you who the vice president is. Um, And certainly they couldn't tell you what HHS is and a misinformation act. Of course, that sounds good. I mean, we got to stop this misinformation. Hmm. Well, may I give you just a a few things? Uh, This is uh, actually coming from the Daily Caller. Here's four major stories, four major stories that were called disinformation. Uh, The first one is the lab leak theory. We, we... Uh, received uh, mm, anti brownie points. I don't know what you would, I don't know what you would call those, Stu. Uh, but we were flagged as a company, and it cost us money to tell you that we felt that there is a chance it came from the lab. Um, it, it, it's obvious that that's where you even start. 
You know, when you have a coronavirus coming out and it's got a, you know, it's a, got a wet market 277 yards away from the bio lab, you look at the wet market, but you also look at the bio lab. Uh, we weren't allowed to do that. For months after the coronavirus spread, Democrats and media talking heads dismissed any possibility that the virus could have leaked from a research laboratory. Um, Tom Cotton, do you remember what Tom Cotton went through? Because he said that it was coming from uh, the lab or the possibility that it was coming from the lab. He was laid, uh, he was labeled a fringe conspiracy theorist for that. Well, it turns out looks like he may be right. Now, everybody's saying it's okay. So what happens to the people like me, people like you, that might have been saying and exercising their First Amendment right to question the government? Remember, that's part of the First Amendment. It's not just freedom of press. It is also to petition the government to get together and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You owe us answers because we don't believe that. If we lose the right to petition our government and the right to free speech, what's really left that is important? If you can't question the government, if you can't question what the mainstream media and the government say, do you really have any freedom left anymore? That's not a rhetorical question, by the way. Tell me how you have freedom without freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Free. Tell me how you are free if you're not allowed to question authority. If you're not, how do we have any new invention? How do we have anything? See, this is what happens to communist countries. People just think that, oh, well, no, they just have some bad leadership at the top. No. They kill everything that leads to invention. They kill everything that leads to um, progress because you're not allowed to question those in authority. So only those in authority, if they steal the ideas from other people or they just come up with them themselves, that's the only way you get any kind of progress. And who's interested in progress when those at the top are fat and happy? Why change things? Why upset the apple cart? Why do we need this? Now, another one, uh, of course, was the Russian bounties on American soldiers. A few months before the 2020 uh, presidential election, begin, uh, the media began to circulate a report suggesting Russian officials secretly place bounties on the heads of American soldiers effectively paying the Taliban to kill Americans. Um, everyone from the New York Times uh, and now the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, pushed this narrative. The Washington Post even gave Trump four Pinocchios for calling the story fake news. Now, six months after the election, the story has changed. A new statement from the Biden White House said former White House press secretary Kayleigh McEnany said from the beginning that the intelligence community did not have high confidence in the information. And yet the press and the government, all of the agencies, said if you question that, you were just a, a crazy Trump supporter. You were just trying to get him elected. You were ignoring the fact that Americans were being slaughtered and, and executed at the uh, request of uh, Russia. You were just a denier. And now we know it's not true. How about Hunter Biden's laptop? That's the opposite direction. If you believed in Hunter Biden's laptop, you were a moron. This was Russian disinformation. This was this was bad for the election because we know Russia has been working with Trump and now they have this laptop that just shows up. NPR said they wouldn't even report on it. Now, what do we know about Hunter Biden's laptop? Well, we don't know a lot from uh, the government. We don't know a lot from the uh, press, but we do, do know now that the Hunter Biden laptop story 
is absolutely true. Um, they're still trying to deny the things in it just by not talking about it. But it's it's not disinformation. It's not misinformation. It's true. There's three really important ones. How about the just the Russian collusion in and of itself? How about this one? In 2007, I said something that almost no one agreed with. I got so much heat from people uh, because I said the economy, we're going to collapse. The banking system is going to collapse. And lo and behold, it did. Well, I said that for about how long, Stu, before that happened? Three years? Yeah, it was it was a long time. Yeah, three years. I was I was really ringing the bell on that. Look out, look out. Don't get involved in all this housing scam. We're in trouble. Well, was that disinformation or was that my opinion? And it actually helped save some people. But everybody was pissed at me. Republicans, Democrats alike. Everyone was pissed at me. How about there's a caliphate? The caliphate is coming. That's what these people want to do in the Middle East is they want to caliphate. Oh, my gosh, that's the craziest thing ever. Was that disinformation? Can you imagine even talking about Benghazi today? Was that disinformation? No one paid for that. No one paid for that. But we know what the truth is because we saw it. We, we in America, the people who were involved could write a book. And then in the time when it wasn't just what was politically correct, but what could be made into a good movie, like that's a higher standard. Um, we saw the movie. Was that disinformation? We are now entering a place, and this is really, truly it. If this happens, this is the key to destroy everything. And that is having the government and HHS decide what's information, what's misinformation, and disinformation. And I know they're saying that, no, that's not going to happen. It's only because this is a health epidemic. Uh Uh-huh. Well, you have already said climate change is about health. You have already said gun control is about health. You will put anything about health. If I said the things I said, which are true, and we now know, about Obamacare, when they were trying to shove that through, they could have silenced me because that's a health issue, and I was lying to the American people. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Who was lying? It was the government. If Americans don't start to see that our founding fathers were exactly right, you if you don't if if the government doesn't have a healthy fear that the American people are watching and will remember and will take action at the voting booth, if they don't fear the people the people will fear them and no government left or right no president left or right republican democrat independent should ever have as much power as our president now has no president no congress should ever be able to make the american people afraid donald trump scared half the country so what did they do they, they put somebody else in office who scared the other half of the country. What are we doing? I think it's time we start coming together and saying, uh, no, no one should be afraid of the government.